Yo, 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 what's going on, Team Tweety? I hope you're all super well. Welcome to episode 8 of Hashtag Ask Tweety, where you guys send in your questions related about football, and I answer them. This is a fully unedited video, so I hope you guys enjoy it. We have three questions lined up today, different ones about how to make the youth national team, the national team, being too small for football. Anyway, let's get right into it. So, the first question. At five foot six, which is 167 centimeters I looked up, I don't feel good. What's your perception of short players? When you see short players, do you see them as less? Also, did you grow at all after turning 17? Right, so this is something I've dealt with throughout my life, like in all the time. In football, it's something where even at 18, 19 years old, I was still being told I was too small. At 11 years old, I was told I was too small. 16, 17, 18, I was always told I was too small. But the biggest thing is, you look at where I've come from that now. I've been in the Sydney FC Youth League squad, the Western Sydney Wanderers Youth League squad, uh, training with Crawley Town up to 23s, now training with a professional club here in Spain. And I don't, I think in Australia, it. It kind of depends what country you're in. For example, in England, uh, uh, I think one of the coaches, no. I don't think one of the coaches told me I need to be bigger. I, I think they just said that it's a very physical game and I'm going to struggle with it. But in Australia, for example, under 11s, I was the first player picked in that squad, but I was the first player dropped the following year because they said I was too small. Then Sydney FC Youth League squad, I was told that I was technically better than some of the players they've picked, but I was too small. I wasn't, it's men's football, uh, they were competing in the men's competition, so they said I would struggle. I was like, well, okay. Uh, under 20s with Manly, I was told I needed to go to the gym more and put on some weight, and that's why I wasn't starting. Uh, it's a very difficult thing and I don't necessarily believe in it. I think that no matter what age, not age, no matter what height you are or weight, if you can get your body in between the ball, let's say that this is the ball here and this is you. You need to get your body in between the player, the defender and the ball. If you can do that, he's just going to push you over and you get a free kick. But if you're here, you're not positioned, let's say, so you guys can see this properly, let's say that he has a clear line to get to that ball, the bigger player, he's just going to push you off, win that ball and go with it. But if you're here, like I said, he's just going to knock you over and get a foul. So I think it comes down a lot to how you position your body, how you protect the ball. If you watch my games, I get a ton of free kicks just from being smaller than the other players because I know how to get my body in front of the other player because the fact is, if somebody pushes you from behind, then it's a free kick and you kind of have to adjust to that and it's really difficult in trainings where if you do that it's always play on they never give free kicks in training or well at least the teams i've trained with so it's really difficult to show that but when i play a game i always make sure that i'm not i it's diving but not really because i'm being pushed in the back it's a free kick but i over exaggerate it so that i win that foul and it's much easier to do that when you're a smaller player because they tower over you, you bend over a little bit and you just win the free kick. It's, it takes a while to learn how to do that and adapt. But now I think I've, I wouldn't say I've mastered it, but I've gotten a lot better at that. Hence why I don't think I've had as many problems with being a smaller player. Uh, I think I'm getting in, well, I'm getting into men's football and once you guys get to go once you guys are older as well and if you're still small it's just about practicing getting your body in between the player the well the defender and the ball protecting it falling over if you need to so the last part of that question was if i grew when i was 17 also did you grow out at all after turning 17 man i don't know i have no idea maybe uh I, i'm not sure i didn't really record my height year by year uh what's your perception of short players i, I love short players that's all it is. I, I've told you that. So moving on to the next one, we're going to go with, which one do I like more? We'll, go, uh, we'll finish with a decent one. So this question, hey Sheldon, I also want to know, uh, he had another question which will be in next episode. I also want to know what is the best route to Joey's or Socceroos? Route, route, whatever you want to call it. So he wants to know what's the best way to get into a youth national team because Joey's is like the young Socceroos and then the Socceroos is the Australian national team. So in Australia, 
how I think, and I think it's like this in most countries, with the younger age groups, they usually pick the players from the best teams in Australia or in your country. So in Australia, you have the A-League, which is the top, top, top teams, uh, like the first division of Australia. Then below that, I think it goes from under 14s up until there. They, the Joeys, the young Socceroos, maybe not the young Socceroos, Joeys, I think it's like under 16s. Most or the majority of their players are playing in those squads. So I would say if you're a younger player looking to get into the national team, what you need to do is be playing for the best possible team uh, in your, maybe not in your age group. If like, I guess you could try and play a level higher, like an age group higher, but play your age group, playing for the best team, but you also need to be one of the best players in that team and then the best player in that position throughout the whole competition because rarely do I really see players from overseas being brought into the Joeys. I think number one, it's really expensive for them to do that, just to fly a 15 year old kid over from somewhere else, pay for their expenses and everything. Uh, plus the scouting network at that age group wouldn't be very good. So for example, if I'm 15 playing in Spain, it's difficult for an Australian person to come and watch me. So I think if you're looking to get into those younger national teams, you need to be playing for the best team in your country, absolutely killing it, and then maybe something will happen. Uh, to get into the Socceroos, so your men's national team or your women's national team, uh, in Australia, I think you need to leave Australia unless you're playing in the A-League or the Youth League. Uh, I, re I can't think. I, I, don't, I don't really follow the young Socceroos progressing into the Socceroos, so I'm not sure if many of them have done that. Uh, I can't remember, I don't, I, like I said, I don't follow it very well, but I think you need to be performing at a very high level. Uh, it's the national team, it's literally the best, what do they take, like a 28-man squad for the training camps and then a 23-man squad for the bench. So you need to be one of the best 23 or 28 players in your country and in that position as well. So that means you've got to be playing regularly, you've got to be playing at a very high level and then you've got to hope that someone sees you. So I, I think at the men's level, it becomes a lot easier because they have that scouting network. Pete, like they invest a lot of money, especially in Australia. I'm not sure about other countries, but they invest money in scouting different players, seeing what they're doing. You take Mustafa Amini. I, I don't know why I thought of him, but he's playing in like Norway or something. I think he's playing first division, but they've managed to bring him into the national team and that's because a scout would have gone to watch him. So that's what I would say about the national team for the young age groups. Again, play your age, kill it, hope to get scouted. Older age group, play the best level possible, be the best player in your position. Pretty simple stuff, but difficult to do. Final question, this one's from YouTube. He said, become elite, just made a video saying it's really hard to travel to other countries and play soccer because of visas. How do you deal with the visa? So from, from what I know, before you were 18 years old, it's very, very difficult to get signed in a foreign country. And I spoke with Tay about this. He said, I can't remember what he did, but it's difficult to get a feature. You look at Alon, for example, he hasn't played for two years because he hasn't been 18. Now that he's 18, everything becomes much easier. He just had to get a feature. And a feature, I have no idea what it actually is, but it just allows you to play. You pay some money and they just sign you off or something like that. So I haven't had any problems personally with it. Uh, in the UK, I have an ancestry visa. I think that helps a lot. It's basically like a European passport, but just for the UK. And that's because my mum's dad was born in the UK. And that visa allows me to stay there for five years. I can start a business, I can work. I, I can basically do whatever I want. I think I can buy a house, whatever, anything. So I'm basically a resident of the UK, so they probably wouldn't have any problems signing me uh, just because, like I said, I can work, so if they need to pay me, they can pay me, all that sort of stuff. But if, you're un if you don't have anything, I think it's still possible. I'm not sure whether it's more difficult. I haven't really had to investigate it because I haven't had the problem, but you look at Elon once, when you're below 18, I think it can be very difficult to sign overseas. I think once you get older, above 18, it's probably, well, it's obviously going to be more difficult. For example, if you take a Spanish player who speaks Spanish, lives in Spain, has a Spanish passport, 
and then you take an Australian player who speaks English, no Spanish, and uh, doesn't have a Spanish passport, and they're both at the exact same level. So they're the same player. They're just going to pick the Spanish guy because it's easier to sign him. They don't have to worry about features and learning the language, all that sort of stuff. So I think that's where it really becomes difficult, where they have to pick between two players and they go, well, this guy can speak English. Well, this guy can't speak Spanish. This guy can speak Spanish and he's from Spain, so we'll just pick him. And I think that's where it becomes a little bit difficult. Uh, like I said, I haven't had to really investigate uh, try well signing for clubs overseas for Spain. I just had to pay some money for this eighth division club just to play. But I think the problem is how now that I think of it, the real problem is how long you can stay in one country. Like I said, I have the I have the UK ancestry visa, which gives me five years in the UK. So I can stay there for five years, then I renew my visa, and then I think I just become a resident or like a UK passport holder. So that's for me, but if you're just traveling, I think on a tourist visa, you can only stay in one country for three months. And then once that three months is up, I think you have to go to another country. I'm not 100% sure. So where it becomes difficult is you trial for a club and they say, yeah, we want to sign you. And then you only have like one month to go on your visa. So then you have to do a language course. You have to study and then get like a student visa so that then you can stay in that country for like one year. I know that's what Tay was doing. He had a student visa. I think he got that for a couple years or something. So that's the biggest difficulty I think is how long can you stay in one country uh, while you're trying to play football? Uh, I know Matt or Become Elite spoke about it. I forget his video, it was so long ago, but a lot of you guys say come to Sweden, come to Denmark and uh, it's difficult because first off, we don't speak that language. So when Matt went to Germany, I assume he didn't know any German, or maybe he did. But if I went, like I'm in Spain now, it's difficult because I don't understand any of the drills. I don't understand what they're saying. Uh, I, I can only stay three months here. And if I want to stay more, then I have to commit money to a language course. I have to, I have to actually go and study a language at university, which I'm not too keen on. Uh, it just gets difficult. And then there's also the problem with contact. So... If you go to Denmark, for example, or Sweden, then it's like, oh, do you have any, any contacts there? Then you've got to learn a new language. So let's say I stayed in Spain for one year, I play for a club here, and then they go, we don't want you anymore. I'm like, okay, I'll go to Denmark. Then I got to do a Danish language course, and then you got to learn Danish. So it can be very difficult, but those are my tips. I've answered all three of them. That was pretty good. Let's see, travel to other... Yeah, and then the other problem is with traveling to other countries is money as well. It's a lot of money to travel from place to place to place, especially when I've got all my stuff, like bags and bags. So uh, anyway, that's going to conclude today's video. I'm not going to ramble on any longer. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Make sure you, uh, well, what am I saying? Do not miss out on the Thursday episode. That will be in two days time same time upload and also if you haven't got your kevin de bruyne analysis video i suggest you go down to the description box click the link go and buy it it's only five us dollars you learn a ton of stuff from me uh, i spend 40 minutes analyzing kevin de bruyne his movement on the ball off the ball it's some very valuable information not only will you be learning a lot but you'll support be supporting me on my journey so if you do buy it thank you very much if you bought it already you're a legend Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye. Yes. Boop.